this change from the head, from the head, from thought, thought dominated way of doing things to more heart, to consciousness, to intuition. Now, someone I knew in America a few years ago when I lived there, a woman worked for, I won't name this company, I don't think it's good to do that, but it's one of, uh, another one of the biggest computer companies in the world. She had worked for them for some years. And she told me, this company, I'm going to leave it because this company is Machiavellian in the way they operate. Now, Machiavellian, that expression, what that means, if you're in a situation that's Machiavellian, that means everyone is trying to stab everyone in the back. Everyone is trying to get position. Uh, there's a lot of intrigue going on. You know, it's, it's, it's a, a version of hell. Okay? So she left there. And uh, now uh, she's in a, in a uh, studied holistic healing and has uh, started a whole new life for herself because she, ma she made the shift, that personal shift, into the heart. And she said she hasn't looked back since. Now, this, this Machiavellian culture is still very much alive. It's still very much alive. Um, one, there's a, there's a, uh, a group of high-level high level business consultants uh, who are doing great work in the world today. One of them wrote a book called The Theory of You. Now, his name is Otto Sharma, and he is partnered with another, another guy called Peter Senge. You know, you've heard of those guys. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Ah, okay, yeah. great. It was good? Yeah. I'm Excellent I'm course. I'm still on it. Yeah. Two years yeah. course. Very good, very good. Um, and, then, and they are also in partnership with another guy called um, Joseph Jowalski. Now, Joseph Jowalski has founded a company called Generon International. The sole aim of what these guys are doing is to reverse this culture of money equals happiness into happiness equals money. Okay? Another thing Steve Jobs said in that, uh, uh, on that talk he gave on the internet um, recently was that do something you love. The key, the key to life, the key to happiness in life is not only making money, really. It's do something you love. And uh, throughout all my uh, years on this planet, uh, I've, seen, I've seen that repeated, that, uh, the evidence of that and how it works repeated over and over and over again. Okay. Um, so do something uh, you love. When in, in 1990, Joseph Jowalski, who was a, a very, already a high-level business consultant in the United States, he was asked to do some co consulting of what was uh, with, with, with the Royal, it's called Royal Dutch Shell Company, which is now just called the Shell Company. At that time, in 1990, that was the number one company in the world. It was the, uh, the biggest company in the world that topped the Fortune 500 list. Okay. They were having some dip difficulties uh, in organization at their highest level with some of their executives. And they needed, they knew they needed a new type of learning or uh, how to make organizational structures or they were going to be in a lot of hot water. You know, things were going to be very difficult for them. So they found Joseph Jaworski, and he um, said he was very surprised to be asked to go and do that. Um, but he accepted the job, he accepted the challenge. He said it was an enormous challenge because you know, this is the biggest company in the world, and he's going to be working at the highest level of that company. But he, he got a great surprise, a shock, bigger than a surprise, when he went and started working with these people. He said, I saw, he said, I saw the level of that of trust amongst those people was virtually non-existent. There was almost no trust. He said, I saw, I saw good men destroying other men. Good people. But the, the, the atmosphere of, of ruthless, ruthless competition 
uh, was so strong and so ingrained in that company uh, that um, the people who were basically decent people uh, had got so much, we could say, into their left brain and so much disconnected with their feelings uh, that they're just scrambling like animals mm, to get to the top uh, and to hell with anybody you know, who got in the way. So to, uh, he, he thought, what, what, what's the most efficacious or the, 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 the most, uh, the quickest way, the most effective way I can start to bring about the necessary change in this company because he could see what was the root of the problem. When you have anyone, when you have a company where there is little or no trust, it's soon, at some point, eventually, it, it might go for a long time, it might go for years, at some point it will start to implode, not explode, it will start to implode, it will start to eat itself from within. So, he developed a process, he, he said, what I'm going to do, he thought, what I'm going to do is, is to meet individually with each of these top executives. And so he did that. And he had a series of interviews with them. That was, uh, each interview was about three or four hours private meeting in length. And he had, he had a strategy and he had a method whereby he was able to, in that three or four hours, bring each one of them out of the left brain into the right brain. In other words, connect with their heart. And he said, many of them, at some point, broke down crying. Now, the question was asked to him afterwards, um, how long, or do, do, do you think that these, this can be a permanent change in a company like that? Maybe they just, they just had a, like an emotional, an emotional epiphany, and then they go right back to doing what they were doing before. And he said, it will be slow, it will be slow. He predicted it would take 10 years, something like that, you know. Um, and that was 1990, so it's still going on, you know. Um, but the seeds, the seeds have been sown. And the question is now, you know, how much water can we put on those seeds? How, mu how can we uh, be careful and nurture those seeds before it's too late? You know, there's a recent film that came out called, uh, it's the second version of Wall Street, that famous uh, movie that Michael Douglas got the Oscar for and directed by Oliver Stone, and the film is called Wall Street 2, Money Never Sleeps. And the star, the star of this film, again, is Michael Douglas. He's come out of jail, he went to jail for insider trading. Now, he's come out of jail now, and uh, he wants to get back into the game. Now, I read an interview with Michael Douglas where he said, today, today, even now, in the year 2011, he goes to certain events, makes public appearances. Guys come up to him in suits and ties, and they say, Hey, Gordon Gecko." Now, that Gordon Gecko was, was the character in the first Wall Street film. And he used to say, um, greed is good. People, businessmen, still come up to him and they say, greed is good, man. That's my mantra. And so he's very surprised and shocked by that, that that culture still exists, and it still exists on Wall Street. Um, so we're, we're seeing, we're seeing the, the pervasiveness of this. It's been going on for a long time, but we're also seeing some seeds that are being sprouted. Okay? So it's up to everyone, and uh, if it's indeed true that there's 40,000 people listening to this, well... Well, if, if a few of you, few of you out there take this in, what I'm saying, just only on a tiny little bit of it, now there's some hope for us. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> and we have some questions. Okay. Um, how can we change this Machiavellian system inside organizations? Because we know, as you said, that there are still many companies like that. Yeah. That is a great question. Thank you so much. I want to, um, I want to refer now to a recent um, 
a recent Newsweek Newsweek article. Can we, have you seen the News Newsweek magazine there? There it is, there like that. Okay, I, I discovered this Newsweek, and on the um, there is a great story in here, uh, an article written by or an interview with Jack Welch. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody knows who Jack Welch is. I think if you have some consciousness and you are in business, okay. He was one of the, the heaviest hitters, you know, one of the big guys. He, uh, he was the chairman of uh, General Electric, which is the top company in America at one point. And this, this article is about leadership. It's about leadership training, okay? So let me just put on my glasses here. And it, this, is, this is one way, one way that the, of course there are many different ways, uh, many things that need to be addressed to make this the shift out of, them, out of the Machiavellian uh, atmosphere in work, in work. But this is one. Now, how to have a winning team, okay, a winning team. What, what qualities do winning teams possess? Winning teams are honest, honest, okay? Or he says, well, let's be more precise. On every single winning team, you will discover that the leader, the leader is candid. He's candid, a candido, I think, in Portuguese. He rewards everyone else who is candid, and he calls out, or he brings out, uh, exposes. He exposes the people who are not candid. Let's just look at that. Maybe I you know, don't even have to go any further, because that is so powerful. That, I know some, that one thing in Latin American business would be, no, that is, that, we don't go to that place. You don't do that. You don't be candid. You don't say to somebody, um, you know, I, I, I heard uh, you've been having uh, some difficulty in the f uh, giving people feedback, or you don't like to give feedback, or that you don't like to take feedback, okay? Uh, I know people have told me, I've been living in Brazil for three years, people have told me in business that the giving and receiving of feedback is uh, more or less a taboo subject. So if Jack Welch comes down to Sao Paulo tomorrow, okay, and starts to run a big company, oh, look out, look out, because he's going to go in there and if people are not being open and honest, if it's Machiavellian, he's going to call that out. He's going to point that out. Please come into my office. I want to talk to you. You know, okay. Look, this is how we're going to operate now. You know, people talking behind each other's backs. People not saying what they truly feel, what they really think. Mm -hmm. That's going out the door. Okay. So, uh, people being honest, being honest and being open. Okay, being not afraid to give and receive feedback is a big way that uh, uh, cleans out the Machiavellian uh, uh, tendency. We have so many questions here, so but many. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid our time is over. Okay, I'm, uh, I, I, I'm, just, I'm just getting warmed up, you know, I could really, okay. get, really uh, get, get going on this. If anyone would like to contact me personally, please feel free to do that. And, and my email address is the same as my surname. Mm -hmm. My name is Robert Broughton. The email address is b-r-o-u-g-h-t-o-n-0-6 at gmail.com or contact me directly uh, through FIEPI or through the uh, Global Forum website. Okay, thank you so much, Robert. You're welcome. E nós uh, iremos passar We will now we will soon start our next lecture which will be pre the presentation of company experiences with the Taipu group from Foz do Iguaçu from Iguaçu Falls. <laughs>